This problem is about falling ropes. Is this going to benefit your life? Maybe, I mean, I'm probably gonna go hang myself later to test the solution. Like, obviously. You must start with the FBD, because you have to be full-blown drunk to do this for fun. I'll be pushing rope in no time. Any English major would assume that weight is not dependent on position. <laughs> like what? Do you even differential equations, bro? You would even last one minute with Navier Stokes. And this is why I don't get laid. But I'm going to lay out this reasoning. You see, only the weight of the piece of the rope hanging off the table will cause the rope to accelerate. And as more of the rope hangs off the table, the rope will accelerate even faster. You can define weight in terms of position by saying it's proportional to the entire length of the rope. So when x is 0, none of the rope is hanging off the table. When x is the length of the rope, the entire rope is hanging off the table, and so forth. F equals your maw will soon tell you that your maw hyperbolically likes exponentially fast rope. I don't know what that means, but it sounds funny. Boom, roasted. Sum the forces in the vertical directions, yada yada yada. And you get the famous second order differential equation that will bring you a step closer to eternal bliss. I mean, uh, I need to make like a rope and cut myself? No, no, that's not a better joke. Uh, cut. I'm going to assume you know how to solve this. There are some profound realizations when solving this equation dealing with eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and linear transformations, which are looked over by a noun called the characteristic equation. But it's 2018, and we have the aid of Wolfram Alpha and Chegg. So hello to all those people who googled this question. You're the only audience I have and probably will ever have. Before the rope falls off the table, the solution looks like this. And using our physics logic, we can apply some initial conditions to get a unique solution. It's not surprising that E is part of the solution. E is supposed to cause happiness, but I'm just tired of it. Like whoop de fucking do. Or like how Kanye put it. Whoop de scoop de poop. Poop de scoop de scoop de whoop. And we're done. Nah, I'm just kidding. If we try to solve for the time it takes for the rope to slide off the table, then there is a problem. You can't analytically solve for time, so the next best thing is to use some assumptions. If we look at the solution, then we could say if the initial position is small, then we can justify that the total time will be large. Therefore, we can approximate the solution with one exponential function, if you guys didn't understand that approximation, here's a visual demonstration. So what we have plugged in is the position function with respect to time, so the x-axis is the time variable, and the vertical axis is the position of the rope relative to the table. And the solution, if you look right here, has an initial condition that is outside the equation. And the slider changes the initial condition. So if we say that the initial condition is very large, meaning the rope is practically already hanging off the table completely, we can see that the time it takes for the entire rope to fall off the table is going to be really, really small when compared to this x-axis. And then as we decrease that initial condition, it takes a longer amount of time for the rope to fall off the table. And that even makes sense physically. And if it's zero, then it practically takes an infinite amount of time for the rope to fall off the table, meaning the rope is never going to accelerate off the table. So we can just assume that this solution is just some an exponential function. We can ignore this e to the negative x. That's what I was trying to say. And I realized it wasn't that obvious. Shame on me. Now do some trivial algebra and we have the time it takes for the rope to slide off the table. Plug this time value into the velocity equation and we get the velocity of the rope right before it becomes a projectile. The velocity is equal to the square root of gravity times the length of the rope. And now we're done. To be honest, this problem would have been a hell of a lot easier if I solved it from an energy perspective. God damn it.